I'm on the ground in Central Australia today. I've been meeting with uh, the Town Council, the Mayor, Matt Patterson, uh, Tourism, uh, as well as the Chamber of Commerce, amongst others. Uh, I have found it unacceptable, the behaviour that we saw earlier this week in Alice Springs, and I'd like to acknowledge police and their efforts uh, in quickly uh, making arrests around that behaviour. It is unacceptable and the community should not have to tolerate it. Uh, I spent time with police last night uh, with both General Duties and Strike Force Viper, uh, and that was very informative for me uh, in having that knowledge to make decisions. What I'm announcing today uh, is a number of uh, measures, uh, and there is not one single measure that will make a uh, total difference that will solve it. It'll be lots of things uh, added together, and also listening and working with the community, and that's my commitment to the people of Central Australia. Uh, so in terms of uh, the announcements today, uh, we're announcing that we will have uh, a sunset school and I'm joined by Gar Gavin Morris, uh, the principal of Yipirinya, uh, and also additional resources uh, to both the community and to police on the ground, as well as collaboration around interagency uh, within the Northern Territory Government Services. So often our police are left to deal, deal with these issues at uh, the uh, point of uh, interaction with the justice system. We want to stop the activities before they take place. So we'll be providing uh, $2 million uh, around a public order response unit. Uh, you'll see the Yorits uh, co-located with police. Uh, you'll see an additional drone uh, placed here in Alice Springs. Uh, we have one and I saw that firsthand last night how it was uh, assisting police in their duties. Uh, and additionally, there'll be lighting uh, in the Alice Springs CBD. So it's not one measure uh, that will simply solve these issues. It is listening to the community and continual action. So that's what you will see. I'll hand to Minister Paik and then we've also got the others that are able to provide comment and then all four of us are able to take questions. Thank you. When it comes to a response, uh, the Northern Territory Labor government uh, is ensuring that every government agency has a role to play in this response. Yes, of course, uh, one crime is a crime too many in our community and we need to make sure that we're uh, tackling that at the front end, but also with our wraparound services, so the continuing work and support happening inside the Department of Territory Families, Housing and Communities, and also now engaging on a Commonwealth level with the new Commonwealth uh, Labor government around the election commitments that were promised and those investments uh, very welcomed into Central Australia around those youth services. Uh, absolutely, uh, we'll continue that work. Uh, as the Chief Minister has outlined today, we've met with the uh, Mayor of Alice Springs, uh, the Chamber of Commerce here in Alice Springs, Tourism Central Australia. We've heard loudly and clearly uh, those. We've gone back and we have now worked on a whole set of actions uh, that will begin to address the behaviours we are seeing. Today's announcement certainly isn't the last announcement for Central Australia. We'll continue to be out on the ground listening and working with locals because the best way to tackle the social issues in our community is a community response of which the Northern Territory Government absolutely acknowledges that it needs to continue to be a part of. That also involves local government. That also involves our entire community coming together to be part of the solutions as we work our way through the challenges that we are faced in this community. Certainly on a federal level, uh, the conversations do need to continue because a lot of crime is born out of people living below the poverty line and that's certainly something that we need to uh, begin to discuss uh, on that federal level. Um, again, the Northern Territory Police, Fire and Emergency Services continue to do uh, the hard work in our community and acknowledging that and working with them on some strategic and security lighting in and around our town, making it safer for people to access our CBD after hours and in our suburbs is absolutely crucial. Uh, so again, uh, this is a suite of measures being introduced and there will continue to be more investments in Central Australia as we work through that and our industries. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much and it's fantastic to, to be here. It's, uh, it's really welcoming that we've been able to uh, receive the funding to extend our Sunset School that provides the Yipirinia School the opportunity to develop our relationships and engagements with our families and community. That means everything to us at Yipirinia. Uh, our enrolments have gone from when I arrived in October of last year from 106 students to 270. Mm. And many of those students have large gaps in their education and many of those students are disengaged. So to cater for those students and those families in our community, we need to ensure that Yipirinia School is not a mainstream school 
We're not a white fella school that's open from 8 till 3 for the 200 school days a year. The Sunset School enables us to run our holiday programs, um, which are currently uh, running uh, throughout the three week holidays. Um, and engaging with some of the, the, uh, the young people who are unfortunately being um, uh, involved in behaviour which don't rep represent community values and they don't represent Yipurini values. It also enables us to collaborate with external service providers. So whilst we're an education facility and teaching and learning is the core of what we do, it's also important to understand who we are as a, as a Yipurini community. So for some of the people who are in contact with the police across the last 48 hours, We've had our staff, our well-being staff, myself as principal, uh, attending to those uh, young people this morning, making sure that they've got the wraparound support that they need to ensure that they feel as though that they're engaged in the community so we don't have repeat of offences of what's occurred over the last few days. Chief Minister's comments correct. The behaviour of some of the young people across the last few days is not acceptable. And at Yipurinia School, we are very proactive around ensuring that we're providing the support and the engagement that's required to ensure that these young people aren't left behind. Because while these are the eights and 10 and 12 year olds at the moment, very young, there's another crew coming behind them. And we need young role models in our community for these young people to look up to. That's our business at Yipurinia. The Sunset School Initiative certainly provides a formal means for us to do that. And uh, it's, you know, we're really looking forward to seeing how this progresses. It's certainly um, made a, a huge impact for us in the short term that has been going on. Sunset School is going for, a bit, uh, for around 10 weeks and really excited about what the next 12 months and beyond looks like. Uh, it's, it's got a real momentum behind it, but also acknowledging the fact that we can't be leaving anyone behind. So um, that's what we're up at, at Yipurinia. New public safety measures are always going to be welcomed by police and certainly welcomed by the community. Um, it's very positive to see the Sunset School and very interested to see what sort of difference that'll make. Um, intervention and prevention is exactly what we want to see as police rather than there being a requirement on police to um, clean up the mess afterwards. Um, the public safety measures around new lighting, um, making the community safer, safer and making the work for police um, a lot easier around the community and new initiatives and resources such as the addition of our um, second drone and increasing the capability of that unit. Those are things that will make a difference but I'm very interested in the preventative space. We have a very strong relationship with um, well, with the Town Council but also with um, Territory families. You know these are youth that have a, a number of complex issues which is the reason that we're seeing them out on the street. So the co-location, what that does is it gives us the ability to collaborate, work together and share the information so we can actually provide the support services to these youths so that it's not about the police needing to arrest them. We can actually put the intervention and prevention measures in place. We absolutely need to have functioning remote communities. We have to have communities that are vibrant, that have activities, that engage community members so we don't see them uh, heading into our urban centres. In terms of diversion, it's an important part of the program uh, and it does need to be offered across the Northern Territory uh, and obviously the difficulties that we see in providing those services in remote communities, we need to work through those challenges so that we can deliver them. Did you want to provide any comments? Sure. Look, I think it's a really important question. Um, certainly when we look across uh, our service delivery community, uh, we do acknowledge that there is uh, more work needed to deliver services in remote communities. That's been a challenge uh, with the previous Commonwealth Government freezing a number of grants. We've seen Kalis come out publicly some time ago saying that those uh, indexation freezes have cost $8 million of services into the bush not happening. The Chief Minister is absolutely right. We need to be working with our remote communities to make sure that they are empowered to make decisions in their communities for their communities. And in line with the Northern Territory Royal Commission absolutely highlighted the importance of Commonwealth and Territory governments working together around the service delivery in those remote settings. It is important, however, to acknowledge that uh, remote Territorians are absolutely welcome into our large towns across the Territory, but we do need to continue to work on therapeutic programs and, uh, and diversion programs that support our young people. We are not going to solve the issues overnight, but through therapeutic, holistic, wholesome approaches that look at the uh, reasons why young people uh, are out offending the reasons why young people aren't at home and the reasons why people keep entering the criminal justice system 
are fundamental issues that we absolutely need to work in partnership with the Commonwealth around. As the Northern Territory Attorney General, uh, working very closely with the Minister for Territory Families uh, and Minister for Police, Minister Warden, around that diversion piece, what that looks like and how we can certainly look at supporting and growing more diversion right across the Territory, uh, particularly in homelands across the Northern Territory. We know that there are a number of outstanding remote service providers, particularly in the Western Desert, that have the capability and capacity. It just has been an issue around funding. We're absolutely open to those conversations because we know that therapeutic interventions are the best way at getting in early and supporting those. Also, the family response units, working in with our families to make sure that they have the right tools and support mechanisms to support young people in the households is absolutely crucial. I absolutely uh, acknowledge that the Northern Territory Government cannot go this alone. We've seen already the Federal Labor Government make a commitment to Central Australia, to Alice Springs, of that $14 million investment for youth services here in Imbantua, Alice Springs. And we absolutely know that the Federal Labor Government has made an election commitment nationwide of $79 million for justice reinvestment, of which we have already been knocking on the doors in Canberra, looking at how we can access some of that money around justice reinvestment to have those programs right here in Central Australia to begin to work with our young people and our communities around looking at the alternatives rather than young people entering into the criminal justice system at such an early age. Because what we know is, as soon as a young person has an interaction with the criminal justice system, it embeds that relationship. And we want to break that cycle. We do not want young people uh, spending time in cells, not participating in those therapeutic reintegration and rehabilitation programs. So look, in terms of our response with the Commonwealth, we're knocking on the door. We've already had conversations around that justice reinvestment uh, funding and what that looks like and how it can benefit uh, here in the Territory and address some of those social issues. We have received the treaty report and we acknowledge uh, the enormous amount of work that has been done and all the First Nations Territorians uh, who have been involved in the consultation in that process.